Hey, Susan, how you doing? Good, how are you? Mm, so far, so good. I had um, <clears throat> I had a little bit of an issue downloading one of your three images. The first one? Yeah, I don't I don't know why it wouldn't let me save it for whatever reason. Um, Should I try to resend it? Or... Yeah. Well, the other th two came in fine. It was uh, it was just that one, and it uh, for whatever reason, <laughs> it was the very first drawing we did. You know that you sent. Uh, okay. Um, like I said, the other two came in, you know, fine, uh, and you could see it, but it's like when you tried to save it, it wouldn't let you save it. And I tried 10 different ways to do it. So it was like crazy. But well, I can easy. show it. I can hold it up or something when you're. <clears throat> yeah, you could. Yeah. Okay, let, let me go get that. Just... Okay. Hey, John. Hey, Charles. How are you? It's Tuesday. We're, we're headed the right, at least we're headed the right direction, right? Yes. <laughs> My God, look who it is. It's Armando. Hello, everybody. Hey, Armando. How you doing today, Armando? Well, I'm doing fine. Good. But outside is yeah. Well, you know, I'm sitting in Alabama. And it, oh, it lucky is, you. It is gray and cloudy. And um, uh, here it is. It's foggy over here. Yeah. And of course, you guys have uh, today's the big day for voting. So, yeah. uh, you know, so a lot of people are running out to vote, you know, kind of the last minute thing. I know a couple of people who are doing that. Um, but over here, it's like you go outside, and even though it's overcast, uh, I, I want to say it's like 72. Oh, wow. It's on the 50 now. Let's see. It's wet. Extremely wet. You can feel on your skin. Yeah. And it's it's kind of kind of like that here. But well, that's smart enough. Y'all are but American. Just, and... No, okay. Uh, 73 degrees in Valley. Oh, good. Lucky you. When well, yeah, you are American, mostly. you have college degree and university degree, all of those degree. I have a question. Okay. If I live in Florida or if I live in Michigan, can I run for any of those poly, uh, position here in Georgia? In my well, resident is out of state. Right. You can't. You can't run for a position. If you don't live in that state, you're not supposed to be able to run like for a congressman or a senator or something like that. Yes. If I don't live in the district, I'll, I cannot run. Right. Yeah. And same thing so, with like city council. You can't be on a city council and not live in the city. All right. Supposedly. Oh, suppose. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> city councils, counties, things like that might be a little more iffy. You know, I mean, if that rule were, you know, strictly enforced and imposed, right? It should be. Uh, um, well, okay. Then that would require me to live in Fulton County since I work for Fulton County, right? But I don't. For working, no. I took it for running for any official position. Am I a public official? No, but you are not in the legislative no, yeah, legislation true, thing. True, I'm not true. I'm not in the legislature, but the fact is, you know, I'm a you know I'm a county official. Yeah, uh, you you're an employee. I'm I'm part of the bureaucracy that we all complain about. 
right? Uh oh, it's <laughs> true. Okay, I mean that just you know get right down to it. That's the facts. <laughs> yes, you know I I am I am one of those cogs in the wheel. <laughs> that we all are we gonna attack? Are we gonna attack him, John? <laughs> can if you want <laughs> you know i mean i'll tell you what i tell everybody else which is yeah okay yeah i work for the county i don't always agree with every policy that they have but it's their policy and i work for them and guess what i have to follow them <laughs> yeah we got an employee i know yeah so now now that is different than say an elected official Mm -hmm. and you know your elected officials you yeah you it's within it's within your best interest if your elected official lives within the district that you do if they're going to represent you and that way they can be a little more aware and sensitive to what's going on within your you know district yeah because for yeah. example my case i live in a sandal spring Mm -hmm. You live in Bali. I don't know the Bali problem. No, you don't. Run. So how yeah. am I run for that district? And I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what they need. So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I look. You know, I don't. You know, I think personally, I think that a lot of the monkey business that goes on, you know, with people running uh, for political offices in districts that they don't live in you know that that really needs to be you know monitored and, and regulated more yeah. stringently mm -hmm. rather sure. than less okay um you know because it is it's it's a kind of a problem yep 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 so anyway but that's a whole nother thing you know mm -hmm. and we are here to talk about Okay. Art. Well, primarily, yes. We're here to talk about art and and how how we might improve some of the things that you guys are doing, right? Okay. Pretty simple. All right. So, uh, well, we got, you know, three of you here. Uh, hopefully more will come, okay, as we move along. Let me put this little thing up there so that when they do come in, I can tell who showed up. Okay. All right. So let's uh, jump in. Let's look at some artwork. Okay. Because you guys sent in some. And um, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Right. Yeah. Right here. Okay. Can everybody see a deer? Uh -huh. Yeah, good. Well, that's a nice Christmas card. It is. It's a very nice Christmas card. Guess guess who did that Christmas card? Uh, Rebecca. 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 Yeah. No. Oh no. No. Oh. No. Actually, uh, Bob Homer. Oh, Bob. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, evidently he's he's working on his series of uh, Christmas cards this year, and he's decided to go with deer. I would say just deer in general as his his primary theme. Um, and anybody who's ever hunted or is into wildlife or anything like that can pretty much so recognize what kind of deer this is. Okay, anybody have any clue? White tail. It is. It's a white tail. And how old is this deer? Young. Very young. Yeah, because it still has its spots, right? Yes. So it's still a fawn. Okay. It's still so, what? A fawn. A baby. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, those uh, spots. Okay. Right. Yes. Good. Yes. Yeah. White. White tail deer. In fact, well, I can't I can't say that actually. No, um, there are deer species that actually keep their spots you know, throughout lifetime, but this particular deer species does not, and so that indicates that this is a very young deer. Okay, 
probably a year or less and um you know still has its spots so it's uh still camouflaged still eat you know pretty good at hiding in the grass and not showing up but um anyway this is uh i'm assuming maybe incorrectly but i i would have to guess that this is probably a watercolor yeah and in fact yeah it is a watercolor because he uh he put it in the title of it. So this this is his first. Um, I am going to close this and move it up because I need to be able to get to this edge over here to go to the next image. There we go. Uh, this is his next piece. And again, you know, uh, really nicely done. I'm trying to blow it up so that you guys can see it. That's a nice trophy. Yeah, that's, uh, what is he, about an eight point? Yeah. Yeah. Or no, uh, more like a ten point. Okay. So so that would be a very mature male deer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't, you don't get to a ten point if you're... Uh, at a young age <laughs> that, that comes a little further down the line so but again watercolor um i'm again guessing that you know this is going to be used as a, a gift or a christmas card and so you know it's a fairly simplified image but it works really nicely and uh you know he's he's handling the rendering of you know mainly the head the antlers and things um you know pretty nicely so he's also using an outline here even though it's broken it's it's kind of like this dotted or dashed line and um he's using a fairly solid line underneath here and and I like the variation I wish though that like he didn't use the dotted line all over, which he tended to do. Um, it could have actually been really more effective if like here on this side of the head, if that went away, right? And it was just the change in value between the background and the face. Uh, well, the, the previous one was pretty much entirely outlined. Yeah. Well, here, let's go back and take a look. Yeah, we didn't talk about that much, but yeah, it was. It, it was, you know, yeah, a continuous outline all the way around it. But, you know, he did break it like right behind the head. Um, and, you know, honestly, you, you know, I mean, you can, you can outline things. I mean, there's no rule that says that you can't and but, but what it does it it tends to kind of flatten the image out when you do that though and so if you're going to outline things then try to come up with a variety you know a wider variety of line and line weight rather than just one continuous you know kind of monotonous it looks like you must have gone in with a pen or something mm -hmm. yeah yeah, and so, like, for example, okay, so he he wanted to make this a bolder, stronger outline, okay, and it does seem to fall to the shadow side of the figure, and so, again, you know, making this bolder and stronger, okay, fine, you know, but maybe do it here on the leg as well, you know, which is really kind of at the same angle, so that, you know, the left side would be darker, and then on the right side, either make the line much lighter or maybe not even have one see and again reinforcing that idea of light and shadow um because when you when you come up with this where the line here and the line here are equal what it says is that it's a flat two-dimensional shape it doesn't say that it's a three-dimensional shape anymore so even even with pen lines you know be conscious about how you use them. Okay. 
I have to go do some on that. Ah, yes. And this is his third and uh, final image. Now he's gotten a lot more Christmassy with this one. Uh, here. You know, we've got a few ornaments hanging, you know, on the antlers. And uh, so. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be the person uh, making the ornaments from those antlers. <laughs> you would what? I would not want to be the person oh. making the, the ornaments. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it depends, you know, if if this were, were one of Santa's deers and, you know, they're used to being around people. Okay. <laughs> okay. Especially you know. the time when they are, uh, uh, what do they call it, meet or meet time that you can no approach. You mean when, when they're in rut? Yeah, because the male we, uh, we kill you. Um, They would definitely hurt you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So they think he's saying he's gonna he gonna bother his ladies. So mm -hmm. hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most most wild animals, um, unless they feel threatened, you know, they they don't really want to kill you. Uh, you know, unless they feel threatened or your food. You know, if, if they see you as food, yeah. You know, uh, a male deer is not going to see you as food. Now he may see you intruding into his territory. Yep. So he may want to run you out of there, but yeah, I don't think his goal is to kill you. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a time of the year where you need to be away from the deer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to be careful. Yeah. Yes, very much so. All right. So anyway, that's that's Bob. Uh, we're gonna skip oh, this. This is nice. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna skip that. We're gonna go to is Gene is not here yet. Is she? No, no. Okay, let's uh, let's skip ahead because she usually comes in later. All right, and um, okay, this is John. Okay, so John, this is that very first pose where yeah, we're trying to get five. yeah, where we're trying to get the feel of the twist to the figure. Is she yes. twisting her body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And and you know when you first look at this, you know it 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 feels a bit abstract. But as you look at it, you know more carefully, it begins to kind of emerge and sort of make sense. And the fact is, overall, you know I think this is a pretty successful figure drawing. Um, when I'm looking at this, the two things that seem to come forward the most, you know, are this upper arm that's raised. Because again, you know, it comes in front of these other shapes. And then this hip right here seems to overlap and come in front of the other hip on the other side. And then, you know, you you do begin to get some of the sweep up the uh up the spine and behind the rib cage here. And so again, you know, you you know, those simple devices right there really took you to a place where you've got overlapping shapes and forms and it does feel like her torso is actually twisted and that you you can pretty much so see that um you know as far as you know where you place you know values and things like that okay you know again you know you made a decision kind of saw where the lights and the darks were um the only only area that i would kind of not disagree with but kind of uh, point out to you is right here at her neck okay uh, you yeah. got you got this strong uh value underneath the jawline and you've got the neck coming down which actually you know was kind of angled a little bit differently but you know i would have made that whole neck a little bit darker right? again which would have pushed it back Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you see the value here, and then the value in the shadow side of the arm are really right. kind of about the same. Okay. And mm -hmm. and in wanting to kind of push or pull space here, which is what we're trying to do, um, you know, I would have I would have knocked that back a little bit more right in there. So just in this little area, you know, it's kind of a little rectangle area, right? Right. Now. And again, if that went into being overall just 
you know, not a, like a really dark value, but a darker value than this, say maybe a little closer to what you did here on the arm, on the forearm right here. Mm -hmm. If those were about equal, then that neck would sit back underneath the head. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just an idea. Um, let's see. Okay. So then we have the standing male figure. Okay. Um, and again, all right. He he had a bit of a twist to his body, and his shoulders were moving one direction with this shoulder coming forward, the other one going back, and his hips were almost not quite, you know, square on to us. Now, did you get that much twist in his figure? Mm, not quite. But but you did at least get the shoulders moving differently than the hips, okay? Um, the, the thing about this particular drawing is, again, you know, trying to figure out where the light was coming from. Right. And here where you... Again, darken the value on the neck. You see how it pushes it back behind the arm? Yeah. And so that works. Okay. And then the head sits on top. Um, the torso, again, you know, you, you need to kind of vary the values a little bit and be a little clearer about where they are. Um, and do they make a shape, right? All on their own. You know, a light side and a dark side. So, you know, that will help you kind of break things like these legs, the torso, the arm, not only as an outline shape, right, but also into planes, say. And right. you, you, yes. you, you kind of got it here on the leg where you've got three values. Now, my guess is the value isn't going to be equal on both sides. You know, this one may have been darker this one a little bit lighter, and then the lightest area maybe in the middle, right? Um, but they're going to change. Again, just like with an outline, the reason those values change is that those planes, their orientation to the light source is different on each one of them. So they, they can't be the same, okay? Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. And then third, but you know, certainly not the least, um, is this female figure. And she was really twisted. <laughs> I mean, you know, her and the first figure, you know, they were they were really turned. And you were pretty successful at this. You know, you actually did really well with it, you know, getting the sense of the hips kind of more square onto you and then the shoulders moving at a totally different angle and how the torso sort of moved up through there and, and leaned backward at the same time. And your uh, your knees and your hips and everything come forward. The shoulders move backward in space. And so you're seeing that stuff and that's good. Okay. And now it's, okay. just, now it's just a matter of, you know, paying a little more attention to the outline. And, you know, most of the time, you know, you're you're working that out fairly well, you know, a darker side and then, you know, a somewhat lighter side, but you need to push the contrast a little bit more. If this is if this arm, if the top of this arm is really light, then that really needs to be a light line. Okay. Where this can be a dark line because it's in shadow. Okay. So it's, 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 you know, practice, you know, pushing those extremes, you know, when you see a shadow really say, okay, it's a shadow. When you see a light side of a limb or a torso, make it a light side and, and look for that in each of them, because you're going to find it in all areas of the body, a light side and the dark side. Okay. I uh, got it. All right. Uh, and then last but not least, I'm guessing that this is the water-soluble graphite. Yeah, still trying to play around with that. I, I, I tried doing a little bit of um, rubbing with paper towel that didn't, didn't quite do what I wanted it to do. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, what kind of, is this on watercolor paper? It looks like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's got a little bit of that tooth to it. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah, um, you might try rather than, now you can lift back with a paper towel. Uh, I wouldn't scrub the surface of it with any yeah. like, other than maybe a really soft brush if you're trying to lift things out. Uh, you, might, okay. you might wet it and then let it sit for a minute and then take a paper towel and wash yeah. it yeah. to, to lift it back. But, uh, you know, mainly, you know, try to get you a couple different brushes, like a big, big kind of wide brush that will carry a fair amount of water. Yeah. And then a, then a medium and then a, you know, like a small. And, um, and that way you can work in different size areas, but you can also deliver varying amounts of water, which will, again, right. more water you put on here, the more it's going to soften certain areas. So, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of manipulating the material, just like you would with watercolor, you know, to, to, you know, get a value and you know maybe a a surface or a texture that sort of you know tells the viewer kind of what's going on there so but this is you know this is a, a nice drawing it's got a lot of emotional impact um you know the only thing i would now did you use a, a reference for this, I would assume. Yeah, yeah, there was a, I had a picture. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. From the web. Yeah, so I want you to go back, I want you to look at the picture, okay? And then, you know, we, we were working on that exercise of trying to get the figure to twist, right? But not yes. only twist, but move forward or backward, right? This, yeah, yeah, this is where I had, I, mean, I, I really tried to get it look like she was, shoulders were leaning forward. But I didn't quite. Then I tried to darken the midsection, so it looked like that was seated mm -hmm. backward. Yeah. And I wanted to make the shoulders look like they're hidden, leaning forward a little bit. But right, had a little bit of difficulty there. Yeah, yeah, and you know, you're you're headed the right direction on it. You know, by darkening the values on the torso as she's leaning forward because she's not getting as much light there, right? right. Uh, but one of the things that might have helped you is increasing the contrast, say right around the knees and the hands. And the hands, you've got a fair amount of contrast, okay? <clears throat> and, and then the other area that you might increase the contrast is up around the head and the shoulders, again, because it's coming forward. And so, Again, you know, if if you have more contrast here, more contrast here, and then all of this midsection is getting soft, you know, it moves back and those other things come forward. And and in some cases, like with the hands, you actually have that, you know, happening. You know, the hands feel like they're moving forward. Yeah, well, I wanted to, that's what I was trying to achieve, that they were forward, but the head got, I couldn't get it at the upper Mm -hmm. the head and shoulders yeah but again you know look it's a matter of contrast so maybe yeah. there's some lighter lights maybe you know there's a stronger outline around the 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 hoodie yeah or maybe a darker value under the uh under the neck on the neck you know under the jawline and again you know more contrast there is going to make it pull forward is there anything that you can add highlights or whites to? Uh, sure. Because now I'm just trying to rely on my leaving the paper white as I you know, start and, and fill in. So is there any way, anything I could use to like, bring in some whiter highlights? Sure. You could use like a piece of chalk or pastel. You could also use just gouache, white gouache, and then you know touch in some highlights on it. I tried a little bit with uh, a little bit of water paint, and uh, that didn't. Yeah, the didn't. water. Yeah, the, the watercolor is just going to sink into this stuff. Yeah, that didn't do it at all. So. Yeah, but if you have actual gouache, you know that's very opaque, and of course you right. want you want to put it down, and then you want to leave it alone. <laughs> okay, 
<laughs> that's always the problem, right? <laughs> well, yeah, and it's it's Things kinda, up alone. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 like you gotta you you know there are things like you know when you're trying to put in highlights and stuff like that um, that you really have to just lay them down and let them be because the more you mess with them, the more you're going to lose the effect of that highlight. Yeah, I say I, I I did try to lift out wedding and lift out, but I couldn't. Yeah. Get, yeah. And depending too no. on the on the actual paper yeah. that you're using, you know, <laughs> it may be easier to lift color back, you know, depending on the amount of sizing in the paper. And yeah. and you know, at a certain point, you know, when the paper gets wet to a certain degree that's just not going to happen so, that's right <laughs> yes yeah so yeah those were that was those were my issues with this one uh-huh yeah yeah well that's you know that's kind of the issues with working with watercolor in general is that you know it's uh a lot of people say that it's a really hard medium and it is in the sense that you have to be very aware of what they call your timing, right? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, how wet do you get the paper for how long and where do yeah. you lane in, you know, right. color <laughs> value, you know, at whatever stage so that you can get it to do what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's stay there or, you know, when you put drop color down, it kind of diffuses and does this very organic looking thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it depends on what you're after, but yeah, you've got to get that timing right with watercolor, and Definitely. that John, all I can yeah. say is that just comes with practice. Yes, right. Yeah, I'm... you know that and experimenting, which right. you know we're we're always encouraging you guys to experiment and play with stuff, and you know, look, a lot of it isn't going to turn out you know you're going to like some parts of it not others but yeah. yeah it's like with each piece if you just learn you know it's like okay this is kind of what i would expect to happen if i drop color into this wet area or this kind of slightly dry area um and these are the effects that i'm going to get and you know it's like once you get used to working with that then you know then you can really do quite a bit with it so so keep practicing. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, now let's see. Let's share. Okay, yeah. Boop. Uh, we want to go. All right. Uh, I want to turn this so that we can. There we go. Yay. All right. So this is Susan. Okay. And so Susan, okay, this is uh, this is the woman who is sitting on the stool, right? And she's well, supposed. To... Pardon? I didn't get time to do the stool. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, and that that's fine. You didn't have to do the stool, okay? But the the thing that was important here is that she was not straight up and down. <laughs> you know, she was actually leaning, right? kind of at about a 30 degree angle overall to her body and that her knees and hips came forward and that her shoulders sat back, right? And and if you could get that much about her, then that would be a really successful drawing, okay? Now, mm, did you get her leaning? Not exactly, okay? She, you've, you straightened her up like she's almost standing almost straight up and down, okay, which she's not. And then as we move to the bottom of the figure, again, you kind of diminish the size of her legs and her hips. Again, <laughs> yeah, so the proportions are out. And in fact, it's like the, the head and the shoulders seem to be coming forward and the the legs seem to be going away from us, which is really not what was going on there okay so uh you know you, you gotta um, really pay attention to the proportions and what the figure is doing okay uh okay. spend more time looking less time drawing okay and again 
you know, I don't care whether you finish the drawing. You know, I'm I'm more interested in did you get the basics of what the figure was doing and did you get them fairly accurate? Um, and in this case, you did not. Okay. Um, you've got all the shapes and everything, but it's like, I want to take this, this drawing and see how she's almost straight up and down. If you could take this very same drawing and angle it like this, about 30 degrees, then, yeah. then it would have felt more like she was actually leaning back on her arm. And, and then you kind of would have, you know, been able to figure it out. But because you got her straight up and down, it really looks like she's standing straight up and down, which she's not. Okay. Um, let's let's talk about the twisting part, though. Okay, because that's what we're really after. And again, mm, you know, you got the hips fairly, <clears throat> you know, coming forward and fairly square on, which they were. <clears throat> the shoulders, okay. This this shoulder to the left actually does seem to be moving forward slightly, okay? And the other one seems to be moving back. So that part of it you saw, okay? And you pretty much so got those things right. Um, and again, if the proportions and things would have kind of worked out and, and the angle, then, you know, this would really be a much better drawing, okay? So... <clears throat> I needed to allow myself extra room on that one, I think. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I ran into the other girl. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see if we can turn this. Okay. Yes. There we go. All right. So here's the guy. Okay. And again, you know, did you get that rotating or turning motion? Yes. But again, you, you tend to have you know it's it's like you overemphasize the upper part of the body and you shrink the legs and that's that's pretty common for you in your drawings and for a while i want you to practice making the legs bigger than the upper body okay you know really just you know consciously you know when you draw the figure make them bigger than you think they are right mm -hmm. And my guess is that after you do a few of those, that they're going to begin to be almost proportional to each other. Okay. Okay. So that's just okay. a, a, a particular assignment for you when you draw the figure. I want you to emphasize the legs more than I, I want you to emphasize the head and the upper body for a while. Okay. okay? Just as practice. Okay. It's not something we're going to do forever. Okay, but let's okay. let's talk about the twisting motion in here. And again, see, you you nail down the twisting motion, okay? And he does. He feels like, you know, he's he's actually turning, you know, with that shoulder coming way forward, and then the hips and things more or less, you know, getting fairly square to us. Um, your values, you know, where you laid in the light and dark, again, you know seems to work you know just fine you know you see the dark and light patterns um you know it, it again you know the only thing about this particular drawing is yeah it's just getting the proportions right uh oh somebody's looking for you i can't always turn my phone off <laughs> i know i can't i always do it either somebody else show up yeah. Somebody else showed up? Show up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> okay. So um, so let's see who showed up. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Let's. Uh oh. <laughs> They're looking for you, Susan. Yeah. No, I still I still have four people. Oh. oh, no, there's five of us. Okay, yeah. John, Susan, me, you. Who's the fifth person? Jane. Jane. Oh, yes, Jane. I got home. Hey, Jane. <laughs> How you doing, dear? Okay, I sent you two pieces of yes, work she... this morning, uh, this afternoon at 1.30. Yes, I know. <laughs> I got them. 
I couldn't get it to you earlier. I, I know. It's fine. Okay. Actually, uh, Susan is off on a phone call. We'll come back to her in a minute. Uh, let's go back and let's look at your two pieces, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, let me reduce this again. All right. <clears throat> and then let's blow up the image. There we go. Okay. So watercolor, right? Right. Okay. Um, overall, I, it's a really nice little watercolor paint, painting. How big is this? 16 by 20. Okay. So it's fairly good size then. Pretty good size. I, I kind of made it, I took off on a, a Wyatt, you know, something of the, with the hill. I didn't want uh, any people in the grass because I wanted to show off the barn and the silo at the top left of the uh, the hill. Yeah. Okay. This doesn't have the uh, the slope that's in the watercolor piece itself to make it look like it's way up on a hill. Mm. I don't know if when I took it, it cut the cut it off or what happened, but well, let's hear. Um, I mean, that's that's as much of it as I got. Right. You know, from well, that's all that's in the picture. But to okay. me, it had more of a hill slope. Uh, oh, it felt it felt like it was moving downhill more. Yes. Okay. Well. Yeah, um, it does. I mean, it feels like it's moving like we're lower than where the barn is because obviously our eye level is really right here at pretty much right. at the bottom of the barn. Right. So that tells us the barn is, you know, above our eye level up here. So that would make that on a hill and us down below down here. Right. Um, you know, you could have pushed that a little bit to really get that feeling of we're way down below the hill looking up uh, a little bit more than you did. Um, and the way you might do that, okay, and just, you know, for future reference, okay. So we've, we've got the ground that the barn is sitting on here, right? Okay. But when it comes off here, maybe rather than having the horizon line back here at the same level, what would happen if you drop the horizon line lower here, you know, and it ran behind the hill? Wow. See, again, uh -huh. that, that would move our eye level down below the barn, right? right? And kind of reinforce that idea of we're looking up a hill, you know, at, at the barn itself. Okay. You could have like a curvature going back it so it goes behind the, like a, Piece of a circle going up the hill. Piece of a circle going up the hill. Like where your white uh -huh, uh, where the cursor is. Uh -huh. Make it go up and around back of the barn. Yeah. Right. Like, right yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah so oh, so yeah, here's oh, here's the edge of the hill. Right. Right. You know, kind of moving through like this. Right. But again, this horizon line where these trees are, if mm -hmm. those move down here. Mm -hmm. See, then they would run behind what we would clearly see as a hill, but with them meeting up right at the top of the hill, you know, then it, it flattens it out and, yeah. and doesn't make it look as hilly. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, now the piece that you were referring to was a Wyeth and, uh, and it's the girl who was kind of sitting yes. down here in the field. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to go back and I want you to look at that that uh, painting and figure out how he constructed it and how he got that house, you know, feeling like it's sitting way up on the hill. And I think what you'll find is that the horizon line was not all... It should have been lower. Yeah. It was not all at this level. You know, he dropped the background down lower and then had the building and everything break you know, break the skyline. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the other piece is the acrylic that I started. It's a 12 oh. by 16. The first day we were in the Benson Center for the... Uh, uh, yeah. Right. And yeah. I just finished yeah. it this past weekend. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wasn't, you know... 
I, when I looked at it, it's like, okay, is this watercolor? Is this acrylic? What no, really? that's acrylic. Yeah, it it kind of appeared to be more acrylic to me, <laughs> but yeah, I I've, I've got it labeled as a watercolor. But uh, at any rate, so in looking at at this again, um, you've got some nice things going on. You know, you've got the water pulling your eye backwards. You know, along this line. Where the where the water is coming in on the on the side, the little stream, and then you know you get back to a certain point, and then the water either bends or it's the end of a lake or a pond, and the land turns, moving the other direction, and and that's again you know having that change of direction is good. Um, the only thing I would say, okay, uh, now you've got this. It it was the top of a hill back here that was a yeah it was some kind of a like a road well or and a I had it marked at, the, at you know and you said that it it, you, it was much lighter and I lightened it up mm -hmm. uh, and when I did that I made the re realization that the middle part was very dull because I did not have enough darks to make the trees come forward. Mm -hmm. So when I, I uh, then that's uh, more or less what I really worked on. Okay, all right. Well, I guess in in just looking at this, you know, uh, the comment I would have is, you know, I kind of wonder about the angle or the shape of this a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I know it was kind of a rectangular shape. Uh, I don't know that it was sloped the direction that you have it, but it could have been. Um, but how I would probably solve that yes. is that the tree here in the front, yeah. again, because it's much closer to us, mm -hmm. you know, I would, you know, get more contrast here, much stronger darks into this tree right. with some of the lights and the midtones that you have. Okay? Right. So don't make it all completely silhouetted and dark, but, okay. you know, some really good, strong, dark accents in there would help pull that forward of everything else okay okay uh the other thing and you've kind of already done it um you know your emphasis is really right in here right right and right. the colors seem a little bit brighter right. and the edges seem a little bit sharper um what i might do is back in this area i might just take a, a clean brush loaded with a little bit of water and just wet that area. Don't scrub it. Just go over it once. Let that water sit on it, right, when it's flat. And just, again, it's just going to take the edges off of these shapes a little bit and soften it, which will push these further back, particularly like way over here to the right. Right, right. Yeah. These I'd leave alone. Okay. These I'd leave alone. Okay. okay uh and even these i wouldn't mess with it it's, it's really okay. like right in here right because you see the, the the amount of care and detail that you put in here is actually fighting yeah. against you because it's equal to or more yeah. than your focal point right okay and so again you know just softening this and since this is well this is not watercolor this is acrylic uh so you might have to do it with a glaze right Right. Um, and just kind of glaze that area back a little bit so that the color is not quite so intense. Right. And well, maybe... when you do that, would you take a, like a, an opposite color, like a little dark uh, green shade? Um, green? Yeah, uh, no, not necessarily. Right. Yeah. What you might take is you might mix, if you don't have a brown, you might mix a brown, you know, kind of like an umber or sienna. And I would okay. probably, I would probably tend to go with the sienna more okay. than a umber. So okay. kind of a little bit of a warmer color, right? Okay. And again, really thin it down and right. then just put a glaze over that area, you know, just to kind of knock it okay. back just ever so slightly. Master Solomon. Yeah. You know, the, uh, you know, if, if you go into it with a cool, like a green or a blue or a purple, um, it's going to shift the temperature maybe a little too much, and you're going to lose that effect of 
it being fall. And, and we don't want to do that. So, you know, sticking to something that's a little bit warmer in nature, um, you know, might be really the only way that you can get that to do what you want it to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. But definitely push the darks up in this tree. Okay. Yeah. Before you do anything else, you know, do that. And that might, you know, that might keep care of it to the point where you don't really have to do anything else. Um, and then you might think about, you know, just this little group of trees, like right in here. Now, I mean, the problem is this. Huh? Right now, I have the people at the bottom. I have share thing where it says join the meeting. And it has my calendar up here with your thing, but not my picture on it. So now what? Well, I should I, call you on the phone and tell you I don't have the picture up here now. Yeah. Um, were you seeing it earlier? Yes. Until just now, it stopped. It just went. Huh. I'm going to try and say join the Zoom class again. And see no, 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 no. Hang, hang, on, hang on one second. Okay. Hang on one second before you do that, okay? I'm going to okay. stop sharing. Okay. Okay. Now we should see. Do you I, see everybody's see faces? I see uh, the faces and you. Okay, good. Okay. Now, let's go back and try it again. Okay. Uh, screen share. We'll go back to... Whoop. Actually, that. I didn't touch anything either. Okay. Hang on. Okay, now it's back. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now it's back. Right. Good. Okay. So, so at, at any rate... Yeah, so it's it's mainly the right hand side of the painting again. Right. Push the value right. here, right. and then think right. about you know kind of toning that down a little bit. Right. But again, do it with a warmer color, not a cool. Okay. Okay. So and I I'd go with kind of a sienna. Thin. Yeah. I got it. Yeah, but real thin. Okay. And I'm talking real thin. Just okay. You just want to tweak it a little bit. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So, you. Susan, you're back, right? Uh, yes. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Let's go back. Uh, talked about that one. We talked about that one. Okay. And then, um, okay. So I'm going to stop yeah. the screen share now. Susan, you're going to have to you're going to have to multitask here. You're going to have to hold up your drawing, and you're going to have to talk and make noise at the same time. Okay, noise, 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 noise. Okay, but yeah, yeah. you can also it's not hold... attached to the other lady because that, that's why I messed up. I got them too close together. Yeah, that's um, fine. You can overlap them like that. But uh, the thing is, well, yeah, we let just, me move uh, it up. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay, okay, so so in looking at that, hmm. Um, Hang on one second, actually. Here, let's, uh, here, uh, let's do a share screen. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand what what happened with the last, why you- um, I don't either. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, well, the other two downloaded, why did that one not download? Yeah, that that's kind of weird. Oh. Well, Yes, there's many weird. But, but I mean, it looks the same on the page when I sent it. You know, they all look, uh, you know, uh -huh. uh, comparable. That's uh, not it. Huh. Okay. I don't want to close that. I just want to go back to Zoom. Yep. To that. And then let's see. I need to open the email. Maybe we. I'm. I'm going to see if we can see it in the email itself. Which. Okay. And if I can open up the window. Or the email. Okay. And then I can share that. When I go back to Zoom, all right. Something that we have not done before. Okay, but let's see if it works. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Here's the mail. Okay. So you can share that. Oh, it's actually right here. Okay. Ta -da. Can everybody see a drawing that's turned to the side, unfortunately? Yes. Okay. All right. So that's, see, now you don't have to multitask, Susan. You don't have to hold it up and dance and sing at the same time. Um, okay. But, okay. So, so let's talk about your drawing. Okay. Now, John? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, I know this is sideways and, and you're gonna have to turn your head to the side or something. Okay. But I'll just I'll just lie down. Okay, yeah, just lie on your side. Okay. <laughs> At any rate. Uh don't go to sleep. Yeah, you see and, all right. <laughs> you see she darkened the face and that side of the arm and the neck, right? And they all kind of fit together and but they sit back, you see, and let let that shoulder kind of move forward here remember your neck was kind of a a light value so you know just knocking that back you see push that neck back for her okay now let's talk about the curve thing okay um your your gesture line doesn't really follow the spine okay you've got this kind of curvy line through here and and here from the hip area and underneath does. But then when it comes out, you kind of go up this the center part of the body again. Uh, and really what happened there is it, it kind of kept going right up under that shoulder blade. There was a curve. And then there was like a part of the body that was behind the spine, which included that hip and this side of her torso. Um, and then on this side, you know, you saw her arm come forward right here at the shoulder, and then her breast and rib cage came down, and then her torso, you know, kind of connected to this hip. And right here, where the two hips meet, left and right, you know, you could have broken that line inside. See, come all the way in here. Uh -huh. Can you see where the cursor's moving over it? And see if that line would have been broken right there, that would have pushed this hip forward of this one. But because you oh, stayed, uh, but yeah. because you stayed on the outside, see it's all kind of holding together as one and, separate shape. Okay, so if the gesture uh, curve had been there too, right. it would have done the same thing. It would right. Have, yep. Okay. Yeah. If it, if it had connected right in here, let's see. Okay. Then it would have pushed this one back and pushed this side forward. Okay. Okay. So I can probably fix. Yes, um, you okay. could. You could um, very easily. Just take a little, you know, a, a couple of pencil marks and you're done. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Ta da! Success. We got everybody's work. Yay. Even though it was still on the email. Okay. <laughs> and turned sideways, but we got it. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit about what I did this week. Now, you may be aware at this point that I am actually in Valley. Okay, and I came over here Sunday night. Uh, but before I left town, I went to the Sunday figure drawing group. And uh, this is a about a two about a two and a half hour painting, okay. And it's uh, I want to say it's probably about eleven by fourteen in size, uh, and it's in oil. And um, does it paint or a drawing? Paint. There's generally a one color. Right. It's a monochromatic painting. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You nailed it, Armando. It is. It's a monochromatic painting. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I could have used different colors, but really what I was after was kind of what we were doing in the class on Friday, which is, you know, can I get the figure on there? Uh, can I get her bent and twisted, 
you know, uh, and, and moving the way that I saw. And do I really want to deal with color right now? And the answer was no. I just wanted to try to get a fairly good, accurate oil sketch of what was going on up there. And I don't know. For me, it doesn't bother me that there's no color in there. Well, there is a color, but that there's not a lot of different colors in there. And I'm okay with that. Um, you know, as far as, you know, did I, do I feel like I captured the range of value and movement and stuff in there? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. And so I was, I was fairly happy with that. Um, but again, you know, that is an oil painting. You know, I've been going with acrylics lately and because acrylics dry so fast, I've been doing them in color, but this being oil, I just decided to stay with the monochromatic approach. Uh, these are some of the gesture drawings, you know, the little uh, two minute drawings. So, and those were kind of what we warmed up with. Um, this was a 10 minute drawing. Okay. And uh, again, you know, you get a bit of a twist, you know, or curve, you know, to her body, you know, her shoulder coming back here. Uh, and I needed, I could probably put a little bit of a darker value right under here to really pull this shoulder back more than I've got it. It's a little flat in there. So that's one thing that I might do there to, to really emphasize the idea that her, her, her shoulder blade was actually moving back. Um, you know, which I don't think I've got right there yet. So, but uh, anyway, that, that's a 10 minute drawing. And then this is a, a drawing that I did from one of the gestures that she took, uh, but it's a longer drawing. And, you know, I was just basically trying to get the roundness and the form in her and uh, which I think I got, but did, I think I've got the proportions off. Again, you know, I think I've got her too big in the upper body, too small in the hips. So, uh, Susan, I'm I'm joining the club <laughs> with you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, that's that's kind of what I did this week. See, um, and you know, it goes that way sometimes. So anyway, but um, that's all I got. It's only two o three. Um, anybody got? Anything we need? Three after, to three after, three after. Pardon? You said 203. It's 303. Oh, it's 303. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, 303. <laughs> well, that's right. Yeah, I looked at my county phone that's showing me Alabama time. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you guys technically are an hour ahead of where this clock thinks it is. And, <laughs> and you what's, know, the, what's the, the difference? What's the difference? Uh-huh. An Natural hour. time. An hour? Okay. Yeah. Well, you see, Valley is actually in Eastern time. Okay. But for some reason, when you cross the bridge up there, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes the phone thinks it's moving into Central time. Sometimes right. it stays on Eastern time. Like right now, my phone, my personal phone, uh, is showing me that it's Georgia time, right? Yeah. 304. Wow. But my county phone, which is sitting right next to it, doesn't know exactly where it is, and it thinks it's in central time. Mm -hmm. See. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, it's... it's. Yeah, I, I get that way sometimes, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I guess, you know, other than the fact that businesses and things here run, you know, on Eastern time, because Valley, Lynette and West Point, Georgia are all in Eastern Standard Time. You know, uh, so so you have to have, you know, a clock that is set to that. And when the phone flips back and forth, sometimes you don't realize it. And, and it's running on central Alabama time. And so you end up at a place an hour late. 
you know. Wow. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many contractors I've had use that. It's like, oh, well, uh, gee, uh, you know, we would have been here earlier, but yeah, where our phones are saying central time and you're on Eastern time. <laughs> Lame excuse, but they use it a lot here. Um, but yeah, that's one of the problems with living, you know, right here on the line of a time zone change. Uh, literally, if you go six miles, okay, west of where I am, that's actually where the line for central time begins in the state of Alabama. You know. How do they do that? How do they do what? To make the telephone change automatically. Well, so okay, you, 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 you realize that we live in a world with satellites and the, you know, and GPS, uh -huh. right? So, you know, the phone knows where you are all of the time, right? There's no way to hide it today. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, if you have that phone on, they know where you are. If they wanted to find you, they can. Uh, so the phone basically reads where it is, you know, geographically and will change the time zone as you cross them so that you don't have to reset your phone. Unless the phone, unless you're gonna hang out here right right on that change, you know, that line where it changes. And then you get it gets a little tricky <laughs> with with you know modern cell phones. So anyway. That's a that's a first world problem that we should all have, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If that's the biggest thing we got to deal with in life, it ain't no big deal. Um, other than that, let's see. I really don't have anything else. You know, we don't have anything. Well, else. I'm going to take my nap. Yeah. Uh, I will say that when I got here on uh, Sunday night, um, Monday morning, I went out for a walk in the backyard, and that big tree that had fallen down has gifted me about 10 pounds of oyster mushrooms. Oh, wow. I have, wow. Like, I literally, I mean, here, hang on one sec. I have a tree full. <laughs> Whoa. <Okay. laughs> but that's no uh, poison? No, no, no. It's it's an oyster mushroom. They're edible. And they're Are you sure? Huh? Are you sure? Yes, I had some just. I'm, a, I'm afraid to eat those mushrooms. Oh. Well, um, you have to know what they look like, and not only what they look like, what they grow on. Okay, certain mushrooms only grow on hardwood trees like these. Okay, if it's not an oak or some, if it's growing on a pine tree, it's not an oyster mushroom. Okay, if but I have reason. Yeah, but I've, I've got like 10 pounds of these here in the kitchen wow. laying out drying right now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, that was a that was kind of a pleasant surprise. I came here last month and there wasn't nearly as many of them, but they were really delicious, you know. Wow. And, and so, yeah, as that tree begins to break down, you know, there's more and more of these, you know, coming out, so. Hey, I won't go hungry. <laughs> You'll have something good to eat. That's right. Yeah. Hey, you know, you and they're expensive when you buy them in the grocery store. Yeah. Well, you can't even buy these. You yeah. you have to like special order these. Uh, and these are real common. You know, a lot of restaurants and things, you know, will serve them. Um, but uh, they are very, very expensive if you try to buy them. But you know, you take a little bit of salt, a little bit of butter in a in a in a okay. saute pan, and you know, with a lid, and you steam them in butter for about 10 minutes. You know, can't go wrong. I mean, it's 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 literally they almost have the taste of like eating a steak. You know, same kind of flavor. So mm. it's good stuff. <laughs> Anyway, not me, not you. Okay. Well, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not advocating that people go out and forage, but, you know, if you know, 
I mean, if you know what they are, you know, and you're comfortable knowing what they are, you know, then you can make a choice about eating them or not. Um, you know, it just popped up on the tree and it's like, when I looked at it, I said, hmm, that looks, you know, I'm familiar with some species of mushrooms, okay? And mm -hmm. and to answer your question, Armando, I don't eat all of them, okay? And I don't assume that all of them are edible. No, quite the opposite. So, yeah. Uh, I actually had a friend of mine who he specializes in identifying mushrooms, wild mushrooms and things like that. He actually walks people through the woods and will point out which ones are edible and which ones are not. Anyway, he I sent a photo of the first crop of these to him and he he confirmed that they were in fact oyster mushrooms. So I feel pretty comfortable eating them. So so I will be back at Benzin on Thursday, okay? I I promise I won't be in the hospital from poisoning myself from mushrooms yeah. or anything like that. Okay. We will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Well, I'll be online. Yes. Right, yeah. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. But I'll actually be physically at the Benson Center on Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I will be back in Atlanta at that point. Okay. All right. We'll see you in the morning. Yep. Okay. Take care, everyone. All right. Enjoy All your right. afternoon. Bye. 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 Bye.